always something new to discover. Before we get into the details of Megalites, I first wanted to talk about this environment. Built using a suite of brand new assets from the Quixel Megascans library, we've also partnered with Kitbash 3D. They're an awesome resource for 3D models and materials. You can soon find many of these assets on our new Fab Asset Marketplace if you want to use them in your own projects. Moving on, let's talk megalites. Unreal Engine is at its best when users can express themselves without technical constraint. Like Nanite did for triangles or Lumen for a global illumination, megalites removes limitation in a whole new category, direct lighting and shadows. Take, for example, these textured area lights, considered the gold standard of offline rendering. Here they are in real time, spilling vibrant color into the scene, casting soft shadows, and illuminating the environment in a way artists simply couldn't have done before. And a whole new tool in the Creator's Toolkit is huge, but that's not the only way Megalites makes things better. Let's see what's next. So it looks like Echo has found herself in quite an interesting marketplace here. It's just about to open for the day. Let's turn on some of these shop fronts and see what's for sale. There's something missing, though. The scene, it's flat, it's undefined. Let's turn on shadows, but not just for a few important lights, for every single light in the entire view. From these main shop fronts to the screens, the displays, the flickering oil lamps, string lights, candles, signs, we're free to use whatever lights we need to tell our story and bring this beautiful environment to life. Now, the density of light sources you see here, it's extremely high. And this is what you get when artists are working playfully, without limitation. OK, let's go back to the scene. Victor, let's go further. Let's activate all these animated drones and robots, over 1,000 individual shadow casting light sources in this view alone. Wow, like little fireflies. All of these lights, they're movable, dynamic, scattering through the volumetric fog, and Megalites handles this impressive scene without missing a beat. As we continue on, it's worth mentioning that removing these limitations around light count and shadows, it doesn't just apply to point and spotlights, but to area lights as well. Megalites enables artists to use area lights as freely as they would any other light source. Now, whether you're using textured area lights, light functions, crisp shadows, or lovely soft shadows, you can have huge numbers of lights of any type in whatever configuration works best for your scene. Now, as we send Echo off on her next adventure, we should mention performance. What you've seen here is running live on a PlayStation 5. Megalites is included in UE55. It's an experimental feature in 5.5, and you can also check it out on the expo floor if you want a closer look at all the pretty pixels. In 2291, in an attempt to control violence among deep space miners, the new Earth government legalized no-holds-barred fighting. Leandro 
Mining Corporation, working with the NEG, established a series of leagues and bloody public exhibitions. The fight's popularity grew with their brutality. Soon, Leandro discovered that the public matches were the most profitable enterprise. The professional league was formed. A cabal of the most violent and skilled warriors in known space selected to fight in a grand tournament. Let's take a look at a preview of a new BMW digital twin visualized with Unreal Engine. This is their new 5 Series. And as you can see, the car looks amazing in UE. This goes beyond color and option changes. This is a true digital twin made of over 20,000 pieces of the entire car, inside and out, imported into Unreal via the Datasmith CAD importer. With the power of UE5, we're taking a master model approach to automotive data that makes this pipeline repeatable and sustainable for manufacturers. We continue to invest in all these tools, and we're focused on integrating workflows to help you build great experiences that reach massive audiences. Twinmotion is our easy-to-use visualization tool that's seen a 75% increase in new users year-to-date. We've introduced new templates and features to support designers and storytellers across all industries. Believe it or not, what you're seeing on screen is all running in Twinmotion, made without writing a single line of code. Our dev team's objective is to reduce time to magic to a bare minimum for people with really no 3D experience. The team's making great progress doing that. <laughs> reality capture and reality scan continue to bring you the best photogrammetry solutions for desktop and mobile. We're now processing 45 million scans a month with hundreds of thousands of high-quality models being exported. We've continued to invest in the MetaHuman framework. We're trying to help you make the creation, of animation, the creation and animation of really believable digital humans faster and cheaper. And to date, there have been over 7.5 million MetaHumans created and exported. Be sure to check out all these tools and services at the Expo. All right, who's ready to see what's coming in the 5.5 release? Our game is what we call a social sandbox MMO. Taking inspiration from medieval Europe, Pax Day is a vast open world shared between thousands of players. Here, you choose the role you want to play. Explore the land, build your home, and forge your reputation. First and foremost, Pax Day is a place. As we set about creating an MMO for the modern age, we knew the first thing we had to get right was the world. We spent a lot of time establishing the right atmosphere. We want the world of Pax Day to feel grounded and familiar, while at the same time looking cinematic, more vibrant, and larger than life. Unreal Engine empowers our relatively small team to punch way above our weight class in terms of project scope and quality. Lumen allows us to achieve unparalleled realism in our environments, while Nanonet ensures that even the most intricate details are rendered flawlessly without compromising performance. And we have the ability to render player-made structures in real time, in minute detail, and at great distances. Players can gaze out over miles of terrain, uh, spotting distant landmarks and player-built cities that invite exploration. One of the most powerful extensions we've made to Unreal is the ability to seamlessly transition player state between Unreal servers. By stitching together a fleet of Unreal servers, we create a game world over 150 square miles in size we can support over 8,000 players in a single game instance. As players travel, ser servers are automatically spun up, ensuring a smooth gameplay experience. PAX Day is a true sandbox. The world's a stage, a blank canvas for players to make their own. Everything players use in the game has to be crafted, starting with your home. We've been amazed at the level of creativity our players have shown using the modular building system in the game. And when full clans join forces, whole player-created civilizations start to emerge. Our vision for PAX Day required us to address heads-on the classic challenge in the MMO faces, how to handle high player density. To tackle this, we created tech that dynamically distributes players across layers. This allows the server capacity to temporarily scale in the same location whenever that zone requires higher concurrency. Player and world state is persisted across all the layers, with each layer corresponding to a single Unreal server. 
But layering, clients can work together to build huge structures such as cities while still sharing the same persisted world. An old persisted state such as buildings, inventories, and market stalls is intelligently shared and replicated using a robust backend that ensures transactionality and data integrity. And it's not only buildings. Every weapon, dress, or piece of armor in PAX Day is player created. We work hard on giving each item a level of detail that will make players proud of having crafted it. And soon we're going to be adding a lot of depth to this aspect of our game. We're currently up upgrading our wear and tear system to dynamically adjust the appearances of individual pieces of equipment, reflecting how much damage is received, so you know if it's time for repair. We also built each item from the ground up to be modular, making it easy to adjust the fabric and color, add patterns or symbols, or change the trim. With these options, players will soon be able to express as much creativity in customizing their appearance as they already enjoy in the building side of the game. Our game requires the community to come alive. Uh, to all the players that have joined us in early access so far, thank you. We've been humbled by your feedback, support, and passion, and we couldn't do it without you. If you want to support a team making something fresh in the MMO space, please join our early access now and help us build a virtual world that we can all inhabit for years to come. Thank you very much. While this feature is still experimental, we've overcome many complex hurdles. It currently supports linear blend skinning combined with dynamic displacement, and we're working on adding translucency support for high-quality characters. With this feature, you'll get incredibly fast rendering of crowds of hundreds of high-quality characters, including metahumans. Lumen was another giant step forward, bringing fully dynamic global illumination and reflections to increase realism and improve lighting workflows. Since then, we've been focused on improving Lumen performance and quality for 60 FPS games. And with 5.5, hardware ray tracing is now faster and can be used by default on your projects to greatly improve your lighting quality. Our path tracer has been extremely useful both as a ground truth generator and for offline rendering cases. In 5.5, we're pushing it even further by adding Vulkan support for Linux render farms and bringing best-in-class temporal stability with a new denoiser that greatly reduces flickering in image sequences.